Now today friends will talk about non-neoplastic vascular malformations of the brain and I'll uh, highlight the radiological findings where you would you know think of a vascular malformation and uh, what is the importance of it. So broadly speaking you can divide the vascular malformations of the brain into arteriovenous malformation, venous angioma, a cavernoma or a capillary telangiectasia. Now what exactly is the normal vascular anatomy? You can see in front of you the normal person the arteries will divide into arterioles, capillary network, venules, veins. So what happens in our AV malformation, arteriovenous malformation? Now here the arterial feeders or the feeding arteries are connected to our nidus which is the culprit and which is then directly connected to our draining vein. So the draining vein is dilated even the arterial feeders become dilated because of the increased flow and a patient may have flow related aneurysms on the arterial side as well and uh, it leads it is one of the risk factors one of the ways the patient will present will be a parenchymal hemorrhage other uh, even subarachnoid hemorrhage IVH are possible because of presence of a AVM or the patient may present with uh, focal neurological deficit or may, may be incidental as well so uh, AVM is uh, very important cause of uh, you know when you talk about causes of brain hemorrhage we talk about hypertension we talk about head injury aneurysms but don't forget AVM as a cause of brain hemorrhage that is very important so how do you identify it on a MRI so before we talk about identification we there is something called as Pletzer Martin grading system for AVM it is on the basis of the size if it is less than 3 centimeter or between 3 to 6 centimeter or more than 6 centimeter or it is also dependent on the eloquence of the adjacent brain that means if you are in the non eloquent brain maybe in the frontal temporal lobe it would have a lesser score or if it is in the eloquent brain maybe the speech area or the uh, visual area or the sensory motor area it would have higher score and a uh, superficial would have a score of 0 and deep component of venous drainage would have a higher score this is how you grade this uh, AV malformations of the brain. Now once we understand this the idea is to look at it radiologically. So I've taken an example to make sure that you understand this is a T2 weighted image of the brain. On T2 weighted image of the brain look at the left occipital area. In the left occipital area you will see multiple serpingenous like a bag of worms area of flow void. Now flow void high, high, high flow blood would appear as a flow void on MRI so you can see multiple serpigenous area of flow void in the occipital area with probably a uh, draining coming from the you know the feeder artery coming from the PCA from the posterior cerebral artery and it is a occipital AVM. Now the uh, appearance on the T1 weighted image would depend on the presence of uh, slow flow or the presence of you know the surrounding hemorrhage or edema or the gliotic changes here you can see multiple serpingenous flow voids that is typical of a AV malformation. Another vascular malformation that we need to know is a cavernoma which is also called as cavernous angioma you may call it cavernous hemangioma which is uh, a collection of dilated blood filled spaces in the brain. Now this cavernoma is you know when we talk about AV malformation that ju just now I showed you MRI of AV malformation. So AV malformation, the gold standard to evaluate AV malformation is a DSA, digital subtraction angiography. Here the cavernous angiomas are angiographically occult. They are not seen on a routine angiography, they are better seen on MRI. So what is the MRI appearance of a cavernoma? I, the MRI appearance of a cavernoma depends on the presence of blood products, hemosiderin in it and that leads to that typical if you see in front of you you can see this typical that popcorn like or salt and pepper like appearance because of the presence of hemosiderin in it. This is typical cavernous angioma of the brain which has popcorn or salt and pepper like appearance that is because of the hemosiderin content. You may have this incidentally or you know a patient may come with some hemorrhage or is usually you would find it incidentally uh, in the MRI. The third kind that we need to talk about to finish the spectrum is a, a venous angioma also called as developmental venous anomaly. This is the congenital malformation of the vein where you have a caput metose like a umbrella like veins draining into a single larger collecting vein which in turn would drain into a dural sinus or into a deep ependymal vein. The typical appearance is the caput metose appearance. So in front of you now you can see a venous angioma this is the large draining vein and you can see smaller caput medusae like draining veins draining into this. 
So this is a typical appearance of venous angioma and often it is clinically you know occult it would patient would incidentally you will pick it up on a MRI imaging especially if you do a contrast enhanced imaging like we have done in this case. So hope you enjoyed this version of the radiology spotter series where we discuss the radiological images and today we have discussed vascular malformations of the brain. If you like us and if you want to follow us for more such videos please follow us on DAMS daily channel on YouTube for more such educational video. Thank you very much.